China's high-end manufacturing breakthrough. The C929 rollout and the paradigm shift in shipbuilding. January 1st and January 3rd, 2026. Within a span of just three days, two pieces of news regarding Chinese high-end manufacturing shocked the world. The first prototype of the C929 wide-body airliner rolled off the final assembly line in Shanghai, and the world's largest LNG, liquefied natural gas, carrier was officially delivered by the China State Shipbuilding Corporation. Who could have imagined that the crown jewels of high-end manufacturing, held tightly by the West for half a century, would be plucked by China in such a short time frame? Wide-body airliners and large LNG carriers were once viewed as the ultimate symbols of industrial civilization. The West was certain that China would not be able to break through for a century. So, why did these two events, marked by such specific dates, slap that prediction in the face so hard? The C929, a lightweight, armor. Let's look first at the C929 wide-body airliner, which rolled off the line on January 1st. Its key breakthrough lies in its over 50% composite material usage rate. This is akin to equipping the plane with a suit of lightweight armor, making it more than one-third lighter than traditional metal fuselages. Not only does this enable a long-range flight capacity of 12,000 kilometers, but it also reduces operating costs by more than 15%. Imagine driving the same distance, where others burn 100 units of fuel, this plane only burns 85. For airlines, this is the ultimate cost-cutting weapon. More critically, this wide-body airliner, built with independent intellectual property rights, aims directly at the core market long monopolized by Boeing and Airbus, the LNG carrier, breaking the welding barrier. Even more disruptive is the LNG carrier delivered on January 3rd. It features a proprietary Invar steel welding robot technology which completely shattered South Korea's 20-year monopoly. Invar steel is thinner than paper, and the margin for error during welding cannot exceed 0.1 mm. South Korea's highest pass rate using manual welding was only 85%, whereas China's robotic welding achieved a 100% pass rate and shortened the construction cycle by six months. It is the equivalent of someone slowly cooking a dish, while China used a smart stove, to create a more delicious version in mere minutes. These two heavy-hitting news stories, separated by only three days, are not isolated technical breakthroughs. They conceal a deep transformation in the global landscape of high-end manufacturing. Below, we discuss what this means for human industrial development and why the cognitive models the West has used for decades are no longer valid. Aviation. Tearing down the wall of standards. In the aviation sector, the duopoly formed by Boeing and Airbus over the past half-century was not simply market leadership. It was a nearly impregnable system of technology blockade plus standard kidnapping. How stubborn was this monopoly? The 2024 Global Wide Body Aircraft Market Report showed that Boeing and Airbus held a combined market share of 92%, with the remaining 8% mostly divided among secondary manufacturers authorized by the two giants. There was almost no room for third parties. Even more alarming were their deceptive monopoly tactics. The Airbus final assembly line in Tianjin, Europe, appeared to be a technology transfer, but in reality, it only opened up the most basic fuselage assembly processes. Core components like avionics and composite fuselage prefabs were still 100% imported from Europe. Chinese companies had no chance to touch the core technology. The United States Boeing went even further. While increasing investment in its Shanghai maintenance base, it used patent barriers to restrict Chinese companies from participating in the R&D of any core parts, and even said harsh. No reverse engineering. Clauses in technical cooperation agreements, firmly gripping the absolute power of discourse over core technology and industry standards. The C929 rollout on January 1, 2026 tore this monopoly barrier wide open. This wide-body airliner possesses completely independent intellectual property rights. Its 12,000-kilometer maximum range easily covers intercontinental routes, and its 280-seat capacity precisely targets the Boeing 787-9 and Airbus A350-900, 
the two flagship models of its competitors. More importantly, its utilization of over 50% composite materials brings disruptive environmental advantages. Carbon emissions are 60% lower than the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350, and nitrogen oxide emissions are reduced by more than 40% fully complying with the latest global aviation environmental regulations. What shocked the West even more is that the direct operating cost of the C929 is 15-20% to lower than its two competitors, meaning significantly higher profit margins for airlines. Currently, intended orders for the C929 have exceeded 300 aircraft, with over 70% coming from Belt and Road countries. Airlines like Saudi and Garuda Indonesia have already signed letters of intent. This is not simply market substitution. It is the formation of a green aviation standard with the C929 as its carrier. The high cost, high emission aviation standards previously defined by Boeing and Airbus are being replaced by a more inclusive, more environmentally friendly new standard. Consequently, the global aviation industry's pricing system and technical rules are set to be reconstructed. From follower to rule maker, the Western aviation industry's closed loop of technology blockade dash standard monopoly dash high premium harvesting is not abstract business logic. It is a tangible tool of hegemony. Technology blockade through patent barriers and embargoes on core components. Latecomer nations are prevented from accessing core technologies e.g., prohibiting reverse engineering, standard monopoly, keeping the rules of the game in their own hands. By dictating global safety and environmental standards, they create a green lane for their own products while setting high barriers for others. High premium harvesting, this is plain profit looting. For example, the Boeing 787 sells for $280 million, while its manufacturing cost is under $150 million a premium of nearly 90%. This forces airlines in developing countries to bear heavy costs, restricting local aviation development. Under this system, the West assumed latecomers would remain. Followers, forced to buy expensive planes or make low-end parts within Western standards. Previous attempts by Ember, Brazil, and Bombardier, Canada, in the wide-body sector failed because they could not breach these walls. The C929 broke this Western set framework. It did not obsess over copying the Boeing slash Airbus technical route but reconstructed the value dimension around environmental protection and economy. A 60% drop in carbon emissions and a 15-20% to drop in operating costs not only hit the core needs of the global aviation industry's green transition but also broke the curse that one can only enter the market by following Western standards. For humanity, this means aviation transport is no longer held hostage by the profit logic of a few companies. Developing countries can access more cost-effective, eco-friendly wide-body jets, lowering the cost of cross-border travel and logistics. For the West's long-standing cognitive model, this is a fatal blow. Their belief that technological generation gaps are insurmountable and latecomers can only follow has failed. China took a path of Demand-oriented, differentiated innovation, not chasing on the Western track, but opening a new one. This shift marks the move from technological imitation to a new stage of rural reconstruction, shipbuilding, the victory of full-chain efficiency. Looking at the shipbuilding sector, South Korea used Invar steel welding technology to monopolize the global LNG carrier market for 20 years. At its peak, 9 out of every 10 LNG ships worldwide came from Korean shipyards. Europe provided patents and core materials, and Korea handled manufacturing. Together, they split over 90% of the profits. However, the global largest LNG carrier delivered by China State Shipbuilding Corporation not only boasts a carrying capacity exceeding 270,000 cubic meters, but also broke the technical shackles with original welding robots. Data shows that in 2024, China's new shipbuilding orders accounted for 74.1% of the global total, with its share of the LNG market exceeding 20%, while South Korea's share fell to 20%. Notably, the glory of European shipbuilding has faded, 
the UK fell out of the top 10 global industrial manufacturing nations for the first time in 2022, and Germany's export share of transport equipment manufacturing has dropped by 1.24 percentage points in the last decade. The West once believed that high-end manufacturing supply chains cannot be transferred, but the rise of China's shipbuilding industry has shattered this perception. The division of labor where Europe holds the patents and Korea does the manufacturing is essentially a fragile balance built on technical barriers. China, by breaking through across the entire industrial chain, has reduced the manufacturing cost of LNG carriers by more than 30%. This not only lowers energy transport costs for the world but also proves that the core competitiveness of high-end manufacturing has shifted from technology monopoly. Full industrial chain efficiency. The failure of the Western cognitive model lies in ignoring China's closed loop ability to import, digest, innovate, and underestimating the global market's demand for more efficient, economical products, a demand that is the core force in breaking monopolies. Conclusion China's breakthrough in high end manufacturing was never about replacing anyone, but about providing new possibilities for global industrial development. It is no longer about a few countries controlling standards and harvesting profits, but about making technological innovation truly serve the inclusive needs of all humanity. What are your thoughts on this transformation in the global high-end manufacturing landscape? Welcome to leave a message in the comments section to discuss. Don't forget to follow us for more in-depth industry analysis. Thank you for reading, and see you next time.